Hello, everyone. Welcome into the CFBPod.com show. I'm here, Blaine Gilmer, to talk to you a little bit about bold predictions, and I'm joined by my team here uh, that helps me keep keep all this stuff straight, and we're working on all kinds of stuff, not only content on the screen, but some stuff behind the scenes that we'll be telling you about shortly, but I'm joined by our resident offensive lineman, Donovan White. We've got our player personnel extraordinaire, Dave Shoemate, our walking encyclopedia of college football knowledge, and Brendan Moore. And then, of course, a new member to the video side of things, but uh, like I said, working with us on other stuff, Mike Waxman. Mike, how are you doing, sir? I am doing great. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Mike is a longtime beat writer uh, for different different teams, but Ohio State specifically knows the Big Ten very, very well. Uh, and now you can see he's sporting his uh, – he's rocking the Iowa Hawkeyes gear tonight. Uh, look, Mike, you said you got you got plenty of those hats, right? I have 284 college hats. So it's That's just awesome. kind of a sideline collecting thing for me. And um, I've never worn Michigan – and I'm not going to, but I do Never. have it as a completist. So um, when, when I go to a stadium, if it's something I don't have, if it's like a D3 school or a D2 school, I try to go over to the concessions or if I can hit the bookstore, get something before I leave. So Absolutely. So he he's rocking the Iowa gear for you guys up there right now. So here we go, guys. Let's break into it. Iowa – had a lot of uh, eyeballs on it for maybe the wrong reasons last year. It was the the drive for 25, you know, Brian Ferentz, all that kind of stuff, seeing if they could average 25 points a game. Of course, uh, the Minnesota game ended terribly last year with the, the punt return from Cooper DeGene, DeGene being brought back. I mean, all this kind of stuff uh, that, that maybe wasn't exactly what Kurt Ferentz and company wanted, but – Lo and behold, they found themselves in the Big Ten Championship game once again. So it's a program that has success. Now we're going into a new era of the Big Ten where there are no divisions. It's going to be a little bit different. And we've we've done videos before questioning how successful can Iowa be in this new era of the Big Ten. Of course, they have Tim Lester, who used to be the head coach at Western Michigan. He was a former analyst with the Green Bay Packers. Um, who now is their offensive coordinator as the administration stepped in and removed Brian Ferentz from the equation. Always good on defense, but guys, it's time to go ahead and lay down our bold predictions for the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll start with you, Donnie Mack. What is your bold prediction for Iowa in 2024? Yeah, my bold prediction is that in this new 12-team format, playoff format, is that you're going to see a little bit of a collection, a little bit of saturation of some of those Power 5 teams, Power 4 teams, and really if you want to call it the Power 2 teams of Big Ten and SEC, that's, that's what I think you're going to see. And I think Iowa, my bold prediction is that they're going to be one of them. And maybe that is super bold, but – Again, I look at their schedule and I say, okay, what's the one team on there that I don't think they're going to beat this year, no matter how good their offense improves or how, how much it jumps? It's Ohio State. I think we can all agree that Ohio State and Iowa, still a bit of a mismatch, especially at Ohio State. But then you start looking at the rest of their schedule. Best team debatably after that is Wisconsin, maybe Nebraska. If Dylan Ryle is some superstar, can't bet on that. You do have Washington in the mix, but I think we all kind of assume Washington's going to be a little bit – different team um, after what they lost and, and who they lost coming into 2024. Uh, so my bold prediction is, is they make it to the playoffs. I think they are going to be loaded again on defense led by Jay Higgins. I think, you know, we'll, we'll talk about their weapons on the outside. I, I love Luke Lachey. I love what they're building at the O-line um, under George Barnett with Caden Proctor in the equation. And then it all starts with Caden McNamara, who I think is going to be, he's not some superstar quarterback, but he certainly makes that offense better than 131st in the country out of 131 teams might i add yeah no doubt no doubt i mean that was uh that was abysmal and, and was you, you can't go anywhere but up and like you said so much defense returns things like that fantastic right there dave what do you what do you think what is your bold prediction for iowa in 2024 my bold prediction when we because we were, we were talking about iowa about two weeks ago and just remember going through the roster uh had to refresh myself just to get familiar with some of those back on some of those high school names. They're now on their roster now. But I'm going to go with special teams cost the Hawkeyes a playoff berth. I mean, I, I, I think the big punter was their big weapon, helped them win team games last year. Tory Taylor, the Australian, I believe the Melbourne Victoria native from Australia. Uh, I think special teams can be a little 
if I remember reading too, Cooper Dijon, Dijon or Dijon uh, was one of their better gunners, one of their overall better special teams guys. That's another guy they lose. So I think overall the offense can only, I mean, it's called spade a spade. It can only improve, I think. But I think a little bit comes down to the special teams that was a little bit of the saving grace uh, this past year. It's just going out on a limb from a bold prediction standpoint. I, I'm with uh, – Donnie Mack here, I don't think the schedule is that difficult, but I do think with a little bit of the special teams, and again, we're going bold predictions, I think the special teams dropping down some is going to cost them a game at some point down the road. Like he said, I think personnel-wise, Ohio State's better than them, obviously, one through 40 across the board, uh, obviously one through 85 as well. But Wisconsin would be another game I'd keep an eye on. And I, sometimes maybe at Maryland or, or like Donnie Mack said too, Nebraska, depending with Dylan Rayola. But I think somewhere down the line, special teams – it's been big for them the last few years. Gets them caught up. They step into that bear trap somewhere one week or twice. Let's them finish in the 14th, 15th range instead of in that top 12 that would get you a ticket to the playoff. Well, there we go. We got a difference of opinion. Donnie Mack says they make it. Dave says they just miss. Micah, uh, speak to punters, man. You 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 recently did a piece on uh, all the punters out there, and uh, specifically Australian punters, things like that. So you might have a little insight on what Dave just said there. But uh, Mike, what is your bold prediction for twenty twenty four for the Iowa Hawkeyes? Well, before I get to my bold prediction, I will say that uh, Dave was right. They've been a really good special teams for years, but without Tory Taylor, he's going to be going to the NFL. Uh, without Cooper DeGene as a really good return man. I think that that's a unit that's going to kind of come back to earth a little bit. I don't know if it'll cost them a game, but it's not going to give them a field position edge, which is how they have lived and died the last few years. So that's going to be more of the interesting thing to me. But the bold prediction for me for Iowa, I think that Tim Lester coming in um, is going to make them a top half of the Big Ten offense. Now, that sounds like a huge leap going from 131, but think of what's in the Big Ten outside of Ohio State and last year, Michigan with their bulldozing offense. Penn State has some some weapons. Maryland has had some. You get beyond, say, Rutgers, Minnesota, mm -hmm. you don't have like a whole lot of teams that you have to leapfrog that are really good offensive teams. So I think Tim Lester, when he was at Western Michigan, they incrementally got better. He was a top 30 offense for total offense three years in a row, 2019 to 2021. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more different formations. They have lived and died playing 21 and 22 formations. And I think you're going to see some 10 and 11 personnel out there. Um, and getting Luke Lachey back healthy, I think it's going to be big. So you will see some two tights with him and Addison Ortega. But I think you're going to see Cade McNamara rolling out. I think you're going to see, see some RPO. I think you're going to see some jet sweep. I think Iowa's offense is going to look like a modern offense, and I think they're going to be good enough on a yards-per-play basis to finish in the top half of the Big Ten. Well, there you go. There you go. Brendan Moore, what do you think about uh, what – you might have a similar line of thinking as Mike here on your bold, bold prediction for 2024. Yeah, I didn't say quite top half of the Big Ten, but I went with top 100 in the nation <laughs> offensively. Uh, I like what they bring back. They're 12th in the country in returning production on offense. Uh, those are according to Bill. And I hate, numbers to, I hate to interrupt, but I just, I just think <laughs> that is fantastic. That 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 is your bold <laughs> prediction that they're going to jump up into the top 100. I love that. Continue onward, sir. Yeah, I just love the what they have coming back with Kid McNamara at quarterback. I. I think Donovan mentioned it, but he's not, he's not going to be a savior at quarterback by any means, but he's serviceable. Uh, he's experienced. Luke Lachey, I think, is going to have a solid season at tight end. And I like what they have returning in the offensive line as well. They uh, they return a lot of experience there. I think the running game should be good enough to get them over that top 100 hump. So no, I don't want to dive super deep because a lot of, uh, you know, Donnie Mack, Dave, Mike, they already touched on this uh, this offense. So I'll put it at top 100. Not quite, as, not quite willing to go top half of the Big Ten, but top 100 is where I'm going. Well, this is called bold predictions and I'm going to go pretty bold here on Iowa. I'm going to, I'm going to say people are familiar with the names of George Kittle, uh, Hawkinson, Laporta. They're familiar with these names at tight end. Well, Luke Lachey having watched film on him and the way that he can move when he's healthy, he's a special player and he's able to, he's able to make uh, contested catches. He's able to do things after the catch. And I think, you know, knock on wood, banking on him being healthy. 
I saw the numbers of those other guys that, during their times at Iowa, and they were approaching at that 800-yard mark on some of their years. I'm going to say Luke Lachey is a 1,000-yard receiver for Iowa this year. And one reason I say that is because I believe that Caleb Brown and Seth Anderson, they'll, they'll, they'll develop just enough just enough to be able to say, okay, we can't bracket cover Luke Lachey, and the run game's going to get just enough better. And like like Mike mentioned, Cade McNamara is not somebody who's going to to you know get mistaken for Lamar Jackson or anything like that. But he's he he is like Arch Manning back there compared to Archie back in the day. He's like Archie Manning back there, a friend Tarkening compared to Deacon Hill. Okay, <laughs> Deacon Hill was a statue. He was planted in the ground. Cade McNamara can at least move a little bit and get out of there. So lots of different elements, plus the, the more inventive, uh, more creative offense that I believe they'll have under Tim Lester versus what they had under Brian Ferentz. I think you'll see Luke Lachey have plenty of opportunities and have some big games. Uh, I think he's going to be yet another guy that in the pro ranks just does a great job after his career at Iowa is over and I think he'll have a special year and eclipse that 1,000-yard mark. So, guys, those are our bold predictions for the Iowa Hawkeyes in 2024. All of us across the board, I believe, are pretty high on Iowa given their schedule, uh, given what is you know back on defense and the improvement that they should have on offense. So, if you want to help us out, then do something absolutely for free. Hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. Hit that thumbs up button for the like and also turn on notifications when we go live. We greatly appreciate it. Leave your comments, your bold predict predictions below, and we would love to interact with you on YouTube on some of those as well. You can follow us on Twitter using at CFBpod.com over on X, formerly Twitter, now X. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, for my guys, Donnie, Dave, Mike, and Brendan, we are excited to cover all things Iowa football, Big Ten football, and all of college football because that's all we do all year long. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time to talk more CFB because that's all we do here on the CFBpod.com show.